Do you know when Hebrew Israelism started or around what time? Well, I, I you know, I believe it was um it was actually after the Civil War, you actually had individuals um that actually because you remember I, and I think a lot of it, think about what was going on with mm -hmm. slavery here in America, right? Right. Um, a lot of atrocities, we can attest to that. I think part of what we need as people of the truth is to tell the whole truth. Right. And so we know that there were a lot of bad things going on during this time. And and we, we need to just be upfront about that. I think part of the pushback I hear from a lot of Hebrew Israelites is as if we're there's something we're hiding. You know, like we're hiding some information somewhere, you know, and so we're not hiding anything where we're, we want to be upfront and honest about what's going on. But remember, part of, you know, just I think part of what you saw in the Bible, let's just talk about in the Bible for a moment. You have the the Exodus story in the Bible where you have the captivity of of uh, the Israelites, the Hebrew people. Right. Um, they're in captivity for about 400 years. And that that narrative, I believe, spoke to people that were them in them, themselves in, in, in a captivity, right? In slavery, right? In child slavery. And so that, I think what happened is, is that narrative morphed from just being kind of a, a representation, kind of a, you know, I can relate to this, right? To taking on the identity and the persona of the people who are in, actually in the book. You see what I mean? So, uh, so you had different groups. Like I know that there was a group called like the Promise Keepers. Okay. Um, there is um, just different manifestations, different groups that came out after the after the end of slavery, right? right? That started to basically take on the persona that you saw of the Israelites. Like you know, it's one thing to relate to what's going on. It's a quite it's an entirely different thing to. Uh, take on the the actual identity right to say right. we're that people that that's being referred to uh in in those old testament scriptures and so i i, I think that that was part of it and there was there are, there have been many players involved now i know that vocab malone mainly addresses the one west group out of that came out of new york right the one west group and you have many spinoffs of the one west group right like you have GOCC, you have uh, IUIC, you have different groups, right? ISUPK. So you had different groups that came out of the One West. And these are the guys that you typically see on the street corner, right? Yelling, you know, yeah. saying, you know, the Edomites days are numbered or something to that effect, right? Exactly. So, and then they have the 12 tribes chart. So the 12 tribe chart manifestation came, kind of came out of the whole One West. But what's interesting is that you didn't you do have this other uh group of israelites now we we tend to label them as moderates many of them don't like that label right, right. but it's a way to distinguish the more radical uh groups right from those right. who are not on the street corners yelling i'm talking about i mean let's think of groups like uh roll roots i don't know if you're familiar with them i was like a i know it's like she's like there's a, there's a husband and wife team um uh Oh, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like uh, it's. I think something like uh, Israel Awakening or Hebrew Awakening yeah, or something yeah, I, Awakening is, is, is like it's, it's something, something like. like I can't remember yeah. the exact name per se, but they I have like um, along the lines of like Pastor Dowell at Straightway Church. Yeah. Like, so you have yeah. It's, so it's the more mild. You know, it's not. They're not going to be on street corners. It kind of reminds you of church a little bit, right? Exactly. And yeah. and they meet. And they go through the Bible and they talk about things and they 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 keep they keep the they they believe that you have to keep the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. I mean, so a little bit of the background is that, you know, because I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself a little bit, right. is that if you go back and look at what is the scriptural underpinning for a lot of their beliefs, like I have a video on my channel. Uh, that talks about Deuteronomy 28. Now, Deuteronomy 28 is not the only chapter they hang their beliefs on, but it's a it's a uh, significant one. It's a common one. And so they talk about these curses, right? So you have, you know, before you have the blessings and then you have the curses laid out. 
And so, so the argument is, what group of people fit these curses? What group of people have been like, take, because they'll take, let's, let's use like verse 68, for example. They'll look at Deuteronomy 28, 68 and say, look, you know, we are, we're taken on ships to Egypt. Now they'll take Egypt and make, instead of it being literal Egypt, they make it figurative Egypt, right? And saying, well, Egypt just simply means the house of bondage. They'll jump to Exodus chapter 20, where it's defined as the house of bondage, and then impose that meaning on the text there. So you have all these literal curses, but then when you get to the Egypt, it, uh, it's not a literal Egypt. It's just means place or house of bondage. And so, i.e. America is the play, is the house of bondage. So, and then, you know, they say, that, you know, we were sold. And so not understanding that sold there is not referring to someone kidnapping you and selling you like child slavery. OK, but it's talking about indentured servitude. It's talking about someone wanting to sell themselves. Right. Because typically a lot of them will use the King James Bible. Right. right. Translation. Right. So if you read the King James translation and don't understand the underlying Hebrew, that is what that Hebrew is actually communicating with that verb you'll get the wrong idea. It's like, oh, it, we're, we're sold. That means, yeah, what group of people were sold? So what they're doing, they're starting with um, a narrative. And what you'll see, and I'm not saying all of them do this, but I, it's very common. They'll start with a narrative of look at our situation. Look, look, Black people, what's going on? And then based on that narrative, they will import that into the text and say, well, who fits all of these issues? Who fits all of this? And then it's like, we're the only ones that fit that. Therefore, this is the syllogism. This is the argument. We must be the chosen people. We must be the Israelites. And there's other verses, right? I'm just using that as an example. But yeah, exactly. yeah. this is what they will do in order to kind of, imp uh, kind of come up with the idea that the Bible, the Bible is telling them that this is their identity. Even though there's not a verse in the Bible that says, commands you to like find your identity in this way, this is what they will end up doing. Yeah, which is something that's 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 just so dangerous. Um because what you're doing is that you're actually taking the the, the spotlight off of Christ and you're placing it on yourself. You know, you're mm -hmm. you're exalting yourself, you know, over Christ and, and over the word of God. So yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, here's the thing. I wanted to jump in. And here's the thing I would tell people, because I think sometimes there's a straw man argument presented. And see, a lot, a lot of what I want to do with this conversation is deal with some of these awful straw man arguments. Mm -hmm. So part of the straw man argument, so we, it's, it's almost like y'all don't care about history. It, there's nothing wrong with history. Right. History is good. I have I got a ton of history books in my library. You know, right. nothing wrong with history. The issue is, is when you make history the priority when it when it when it takes the place or starts to rival your affections the your alleged affections you have for Christ that's the problem what you will notice and i noticed this cuz i've been watching is that you go to most hebrew israelite channels their social media platforms the gospel is not there exactly yep. the emphasis is on who who is the people who is god's people Right. <laughs> right. Who's the chosen people? I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying and I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm just I'm just stay, I'm just making an observation. Go to those channels. Now, the one of the pushbacks has been uh, a lot of the you know, a lot of the apologists. They're not preaching the gospel. Well, that's just patently false. I mean, if, if the argument is the apologists are not uh, preaching the gospel, teaching from God's word. Someone's not been paying attention because there's been plenty of teaching going on. And I, and I and just like I said earlier, brother, we need to do more. That's that's that is our weapon. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. Exactly. The weapon that we use, we fight. We fight. The weapons of our warfare is knocking down those strongholds. Right. You know, right. that's what we're that's what we're doing. We do that with the word of God. And yep. so we don't have to get nasty. We don't have to call people names. We don't have to do any of that. All we have to do is proclaim the truth of God's word. Exactly. And, stand and, I, think, that. and I think that what, um, and I think where the disconnect is really mm -hmm. is I think that people who are a part of this movement 
are arguing for culture. You know, they, they think that this is some type of a culture war. Like this is, mm -hmm. um, you know, black churchianity or black church culture versus Hebrew Israelism. You know what I'm saying? Or this new culture, this newfound culture that they have. Hmm. And I've had to tell, explain this to a couple of people, like, we, you know, this isn't a culture war. This is a this is a war on truth. You see yep. what I'm saying? So so we're we're arguing for truth. Yep. We're not arguing because we want to try to win some some culture battle or, or we're trying to do something yep. different. You know, it's mm -hmm. no, that that's not what it's about. You know, when we read those scriptures, we're saying that this is true. This is what the Bible says, and this is what it says in this context. So let's stick to that, you well, know. And I think that 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 mm -hmm. is that's one of the big uh, hurdles that that we're jumping into right now. And I would say, let me add something to that. I think we, you're you're yeah. riding the money with that. Here's the thing: we got to be careful because there is even outside of what's going on with Black Hebrew Israelism. Okay is that there is a culture shift just in the world as far as what, what they deem is important. We live now in a world of pluralism. There's no objective truth, my truth, your truth. So that's bigger than mm -hmm. Black Hebrew originalism. Mm -hmm. But under that umbrella now, you hear things like, you know, we, we need to decolonize our theology, right? That's not really a black Hebrew Israelite thing. That's that that this thing has been going on. This is bigger than that, right? But just within the umbrella of what you hear, you hear that all the time. Like, you know, you're thinking we're against Eurocentric Christianity. Right. You hear that all the time. It's like it's like one culture, as you put it, versus another culture. And here's what we need to understand is that God has providentially worked through human history to proclaim his truth and he uses people from a variety of cultures and backgrounds to do that exactly. and so if we start looking at someone's phenotype if we start looking at skin color and that becomes the lens by which we determine what is received or what is dismissed we we're we're really operating in a category that's antithetical uh from what you see in scripture because right. God has used a variety of different people in order to proclaim his truth and his truth has been consistent. His truth can, his truth can be tested and we have that revelation and it's the word of God. And so when someone proclaims something, the first thing I, 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 that doesn't come out of my mouth is, is the white person or did a white person tell you that? No, the first thing out of my mouth is, is it, does it accord to the word of God? And if it does, I receive it. If it doesn't, I throw it away. I don't care who it is. Mm 